Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Check out the link below, fool.com forward slash the smattering, to get access to the 10 best stocks to buy right now. Shares of Brookfield Renewable are down a painful 38% from the all-time high. There's a ton of people looking at that stock right now saying, hey, this is the time to buy. This is the cheapest it's been in a long time. Not sure if that's necessarily the case, though. We're going to talk about that right now and try and figure out, is this the time to buy Brookfield Renewable or not? I'm Jason Hall. This is a smattering. Tyler Crow is here with me. Hey, what's up, Tyler? I'm doing pretty good. We're going to do a little back and forth on something we both own, but maybe don't agree on when it comes to buying right now. So I think we're close to agreement. There's a little bit of difference in the nuance, but I can promise you, if you're watching, it's worth staying through to the end. So again, hitting the high notes, the stock is down roughly 38% from its all-time high hit a couple of years ago. The dividend yield has been pushed back up to over 4%. That's the highest it's been in a long time. Looking past the early days of the pandemic, that crash when yields got pushed up, the yield is the highest it's been in a while. But the question again is, does that make it worth buying at these prices? Tyler, how about you start us off with where you stand? So we talk about the yield is the highest it's been in a while. Well, what what's the definition of a while? It's certainly up from the less than 3% it was in 2020. But if we go back over the longer term, this was a company that historically yielded much, much higher rates, somewhere around 6%. And, and you for, can for chalk... context, the yield right now is between 4 and 5%. So right. it's substantially lower, really. If we look at its normalized long-term yield, it's substantially lower. Right. So, and I think there's a lot of hype is the, probably the wrong word, a little bit of optimistic naivete in renewable right now because renewable specifically solar and wind it's a business you and i have followed for quite some time and it is a tough challenging business that hasn't made a lot of money and brookfield has been one of the very few players who has gotten it right they've been very very opportunistic i actually came into shares of brookfield renewable by buying a terraform power which they acquired for pennies on the dollar. Great for them, but it kind of bailed me out of my position, luckily. And that was part of their first foray into wind and solar specifically prior right. to that. And this they is were one of the things you- Colombian hydroelectric company. That was their core business. And that's part of the reason the stock, if we're honest, that's one of the reasons the stock yielded so high for a long time. It was very underfollowed because it wasn't very interesting to most people. Then the company probably six or seven years ago, the company started making some acquisitions and management realized that we can make money in wind and solar. We know how to make money there. And fast forward to today, and there's so much on renewables, the Inflation Reduction Act that's putting so much money into, into renewable development. They're in the right place in the value chain, right? They're the operators or the financers of these big wind and solar farms. They operate some of the infrastructure in between, and they make money by getting really good cost of capital and either financing the deals or selling the power right, on these long-term contracts and making good money. So that's the thesis, right? That's why it's been a winner. Yeah. We talked about maybe why the stocks, the yield using that as a proxy for valuation is lower than it used to be. But let's, I mean, to me, it sounds like you're kind of leaning towards, no, this is not really an attractive buy right now. So when, when we're talking about infrastructure, whether it be oil and gas pipelines, wind turbines, anything like that. When you're ever you're buying an individual asset like that, it has a fixed rate of return. You don't get growth out of a single wind turbine, right? Like it's a fixed structure. It's going to generate a certain amount. And so right. typically in this industry, whenever you see deals are struck, a lot of times you'll see in press releases, they're done at certain multiples. And the multiple is generally as an enterprise value to EBITDA. Some of the most disciplined allocators I've seen in this industry won't touch anything at more at more than 10 times EV to EBITDA. And then some of the really good ones can get a, a good deal done when a low cost of capital somewhere in the like 10 to 13, maybe even pushing it to 14. That's where we really start to get into the, if a management team is buying at that sort of rate, that's typically when you start to see companies reaching for growth and not necessarily thinking about returns for investors. Right now, if we look at Brookfield Renewables Partners, it's currently trading at 17 times EV to EBITDA. So if I were a business person looking to acquire the whole set of assets owned by Brookfield Renewable, 
that is a really high multiple. Now, granted, this is not buying the fixed asset. You're buying the entity that is going to grow because it's going to allocate capital into new deals. It's going to get some new financing, things like that. But there is a component to me where I look at it and say, even though it is down, it still to me looks too overvalued to be making any serious capital allocations into this right now. I'm going to follow up on that a little bit too, with a little bit of visual evidence. You see a slide here. So this is again, EV to EBITDA, like you were just describing, this is enterprise value to EBITDA. So this is basically all of the costs of acquiring a business. You buy the business itself, you assume the debt, you sum out any net cash that you have, right? So you subtract that out that, and, and that's the enterprise value. And then EBITDA, earnings before interest tax, depreciation, amortization. That's that normalizing number that Tyler was talking about. Historically, you're looking at somewhere around 12 to 15 times. You go back the past decade or so, and that's really, that's about where the stock has been. Every once in a while, something would happen where you'd get an opportunity to buy the stock at a significantly discounted rate. To Tyler's point, it's a steal. If you could buy Brookfield Renewable for the multiple that they're they're using to acquire the underlying assets, you're doing really, really, really good. Let's acknowledge oh, yeah. that. And it is worth a premium because they've demonstrated their ability to be really good buyers and then tap more capital and then use those excess cash flows too to rinse and repeat. They've demonstrated the ability to do that. So they're certainly worth a premium to what they're able to pay for those assets, like you said. To me, thinking about that roughly 17 times EV to EBITDA, I would say that that is an absolute ceiling. You know, we're basically knocking on the premium that I would be willing to pay at the highest point. And as an investor, this is not a price that if I was going to make one buy of Brookfield Renewable and like, this is the position that I'm going to buy that I'm going to hold for the next 10 years, 17 times EBITDA, that's not the price that I would want to pay. I would want to pay substantially lower for that. So I would think about if I'm an investor that's maybe dollar cost averaging, you're buying a little bit every month or once a quarter or a few times a year, and you're going to build out your position over multiple years. Maybe this is a good place to start, maybe a good place to add a little bit, but I would want to be far more disciplined in this environment with interest rates so much higher. This is definitely a premium business, but I think to Tyler's point, we're probably stretching it in terms of this being a price that I would want to pay.